in collaboration with the University of Rio Grande, Rio Grande Community College, and the Ohio State University South Centers, we proudly present a series of different broadcast TV and radio shows that highlight different aspects of small businesses. Our co-hosts include Ryan Mapes, Endeavor Center Manager and Program Leader with the Ohio State University South Centers, Mike Thompson, Director of the Instructional Design and Media Services at the University of Rio Grande, and Brad Babst, Small Business Development Center Director with the Ohio State University South Centers. Small business owners and guests discuss information that is strictly business. In collaboration with the University of Rio Grande, Rio Grande Community College, And if you've noticed, we're not in Rio Grande. We're at the OSU South Centers in a makeshift studio that uh, the people here at the South Centers have provided. So this is going to be an experience unlike a lot of them. Funny. So uh, this is strictly business, not funny business. Although we've had a little bit of funny business before we got on the air here. Yeah, been a lot of funny business going on this morning. That's right. So... It's strictly business now. That's right. It's time to get serious. Right. Talk about some serious stuff. Okay. So uh, I'm here with Brad Bast, and uh, what are we going to talk about, and who is our guest? Well, today, uh, in talking about business, we've invited Susan Foltz uh, to come join us today. Susan is the Associate Director for the Small Business Development Centers of Ohio. Uh, Susan works with a lot of the programs that we have here at South centers, uh, specifically the Small Business Development Center. So I work very closely with Susan uh, and a lot of our program people that we have with the SPDC here. And uh, we'd really like to welcome Susan to the show today to talk about uh, her career and, and a lot of the stuff that she's done with the Development Services Agency and the Small Business Development Centers. So welcome, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have been at the Development Services Agency for 14 years. Um, before I started there, I worked for an oil field manufacturer located in Bremen, Ohio. And after that um, facility closed, I worked for um, a manufacturer of mobile medical clinics. So manufacturing and small business is in my blood. When the um, second manufacturer downsized, it, I thought it was time to look for a career in the state of Ohio. And um, it took a while, but um, got it invited in for an interview and found out about the Small Business Development Center program, which being in business for more than 20 years never knew existed. Right. So at that time, it, and it's, most places, it's still a well-kept secret. Yes. So and we're trying to make that better and get out there and make sure that um, the public knows about us, small business know about us, so they can come in for no-cost counseling services. Some centers um, provide training programs at a minimal cost, um, and uh, we have 27 centers located across the state. Today we're here in Piketon at the Ohio State University South Centers, um, they have the SBDC services here, as well as they provide international export assistance and manufacturing and technology specialty assistance. So they focus in on what a business is doing right and then look for ways to help them improve and become a better producer in, o in Ohio. Okay. Well, that's pretty much the whole Small Business Development Center, kind of an overview. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about the Small Business Development Centers. They're kind of housed within the Development Services Agency of Ohio? Correct. And what are some of the other programs that are kind of a part of that uh, Development Services Agency? Um, we have a new organization within our office. Now we're called the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Office. We have the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers along with us. 
We have the Manufacturing Extension Partnership Program along with us, as well as the Entrepreneur Signature Program through the Technology Office. Um, and all of us focus in on business support services. Okay. Sounds like there's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of opportunities for businesses to obtain tax credits, um, other incentive programs to look for expansion, bring new jobs in, and um, open the door for new opportunities. Okay, good. What do you find yourself doing the most? Um, myself. The common problems that you see. For businesses, um, a lot of them don't know how to start. So they'll go to, we have the First Stop Business Connection within our office that provides um, free step-by-step um, -step instructions on how to register a new business in Ohio. So this is whether I want to form a corporation, LLC, or whatever kind of business structure. Correct. That's where they're starting. Correct. Okay. So Correct. Not necessarily are you working with businesses that have been there for a long time mm -hmm. and want to expand and that sort of thing. You more work with people that are just starting out. When we get people that are looking to expand or the existing businesses, we prefer to send them to the SBDC centers directly for assistance because our field staff are certified business advisors. They go through a training program where um, we know that they have the expertise in HR, um, in accounting, and um, marketing. So those three basic areas every business needs. And I can see, you know, a lot of businesses just starting out. They know what they want to do. Like myself, I'm a video editor, photographer, and uh, all that. But knowing how to handle, you know, if I wanted to expand and then hire somebody, that's a whole new can of worms there with taxes and employees and all that. Correct. And in the first stop kit, it will give you the steps you go through to register to become an employer, but you're going to need services from Brad and his team that are going to help you do it the right way. Yeah, and it's it's a great program, and like like you've said, Susan, it's very well uh, hidden <laughs> and. Like I said, we're across the whole state. We cover the entire state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. There are different centers everywhere. Uh, and, and this is not only done through funding from the state of Ohio, but also on the federal level as well. Correct. We get the lion's share of our funding from the Small Business Administration. And then through the grant we have with them, we're required to match those dollars one to one. 50% um, must be cash and 50% can be non-cash. So the 50% cash, the state provides a portion of that. And then we come out to host organizations like Ohio State University South Centers to add an additional component of match. It helps to make the program more dynamic. It gives the local community a say in how, what happens in their local program because it is, um, their investment. Right. That skin in the game. Just like right. we tell business owners, if you wanna if you wanna start your business, you need to bring your own money to the table. Right. You're not gonna start it on somebody else's money. A bank's right. not gonna lend you all the money you need to start a business. Correct. You need Correct. to have some investment. Turns up the heat a little bit. Yes it does. <laughs> Makes you a, a little more dedicated to your project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs motivation. Yes. Yes. Um you know, you, you mentioned, uh, well, the G word, as we call it, in, in business <laughs> counseling, grants, mm -hmm. uh, and, and basically the program that we operate from that funds the services we provide is a grant. Correct. So there is a lot of truth to the myth that's out there that, you know, there's millions and millions of grant dollars available to help small businesses get started. But a lot of that is in the form of technical services that are provided to you for consulting free of charge. Correct. So that technically is a grant. Correct. Even though you may not be able to go out and get $10,000 or $20,000, you're not going to find that in the form of a grant as a cash injection to help you get started. But the free consultation is 
free. <laughs> correct. So. Correct. So the grant comes to the state in the form that it does so that the businesses actually get the free services. So that makes a difference in your local investment, how you want to handle all of that. Yeah, process. and a lot of a lot of the times that you know we, we tout with the small business development centers, we measure how much success we've had and how much money the businesses that we work with can borrow from the bank, how much capital they invest in their project. But one thing that we truly don't capture is the uh, amount of services we provide to them to help them make really good educated decisions on how to invest their money, or maybe it's best that they don't invest their money in their dream. Right. So sometimes we don't capture that uh, savings that we provide. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, both of you maybe, uh, of the ones that don't make it, you know, you've had lots of successes, but the ones that don't succeed, what is there a common theme of why they didn't they didn't take your advice probably maybe or why would the a business not make it well from from my experience it's uh, the lack of planning up front uh, they don't put together a business plan the cash flow aspect. they don't put together cash flow projections for the business they go ahead and start the business and build it the and money will come they think sometimes doesn't always work <laughs> right. So, and a lot of times those folks will contact us when they're really struggling. But at that point, it's too late. So, if they would, you know, kind of get us involved in the process before they start the business, before they invest the money, maybe, you know, that's one of the greatest services, like I mentioned, we provide is helping them do that planning up front, do that financial analysis up front, and really make a good informed decision on whether they should or should not invest their money in starting that business. Can you do a market analysis? You know, maybe I want to open a pizza place. Right. You know, like everybody. And, and we can and do And they go, no, there's like eight pizza places in town, and you, you know, it's a tough one to, to make fly. Right. So yeah. you, you can help on the market. We can help on the marketing and, and the market analysis and helping provide that information, do that research, and see what's available out there and what competition's already out there. How many do you shoot down, you know, not that you're messing somebody's <laughs> dreams up, but how many have you uh, said, you know, change your idea? Is that a large percentage or a small? Uh, sometimes it's a large percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, people that come to us and explore ideas, a lot of the exploration ends in a decision not to move forward. Mm -hmm. How about the ones who have started and... Uh, all are struggling or need something to tweak it. Does that happen a lot? That happens a lot. You know, that's uh, probably the majority of the, the companies or individuals we work with are somebody who already has an existing business. Mm -hmm. You know, and we try to keep that up around 70% of the clients that we work with as, mm -hmm. as existing business owners. Okay. So. And of those, you have pretty decent success? Yeah, we have decent success on helping them move forward with projects. And, and making their business more successful. How about the ones that uh, may have thought, you know, I'm going to quit my job, I'm going to work for myself, and have this newfound freedom, and then they come to you and go, uh, this is a lot more work than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you get any of those? Yeah, we get some of those. And we encourage folks, if, if there's a way to kind of get their business started on the side and keep their existing job mm -hmm. for a trial period, we highly recommend that because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people underestimate the work that goes into running yes. their own business because you, you tend to live the business you know you wake up and you're the business you go to sleep and you're still the business and you know when you work for somebody else you can leave the job and say forget it for a while that's right it's always there waiting on you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well we've talked a little bit about you know business that's you know, it's out there, it's going on. Are, are there any things uh, that the state's putting in place, you know, for some of this new growth or to help encourage growth, maybe some incentive programs that's coming down the pipeline or that's already in place? Um, the one big one that we have right now is a tax um, credit for small businesses. The first 250000 of your gross income, you will not pay income tax on 
it'll be at a 75% reduced rate. Um, in the past two years, it was a 50% reduced rate. So this year it goes up to 75. Um, and that, um, the state's looking for ways to add new jobs. So their theory is that you would, the business would save this money and possibly be able to add a new employee. Okay. Well, that'd be good. That's what we need is job growth. Right. Okay. Are there any type of businesses that are, uh, I know sometimes they uh, want to promote a certain type of business. Is there any of that? There's a real push right now for manufacturers and technology-based businesses. Um, and there's a lot of support programs for those technology-based startup businesses. Um, there's um, small business innovative research programs that they can get money to help boost their business startup in that R&D stage. So there's a lot of opportunities, not just from the state, but from the federal government too. Now these technology uh, things, are they more service type technology or is that a manufacturing technology? Or I think it can be both because some of them are they're looking at new medical devices, so they're asking for inventors to come in with a new idea. And um, we have so much technology nowadays, how we can improve that and make it better. Right, that's kind of why I asked the question, because technology encompasses everything, pretty much. Right. How about the health care? I, I hear a lot of small businesses you know, struggling with the idea of health care. Is that something that you guys can help with as far as how to organize that to maximize, you know, your funds? Yeah, I, one of the things that we've done here over the past uh, couple of years at the South Centers with our business program is we've put on a couple of workshops uh, on the new health care law mm -hmm. and the Affordable Care Act and how that affects employers and some of the different regulations and guidelines. So that's one of the... Uh, the services we provide is kind of those workshops and trainings on the, kind of we bring in a subject matter expert somebody that knows a lot okay. well because that's a whole can of worms oh itself. yeah and, and somebody that's really close to the industry that's really got their finger on the pulse of uh, what's going on in, in federal government and the legislature uh, current the you know the latest and greatest version that was probably just changed yesterday right uh, of what the rules and regulations are and we've, we've kind of broken that down into a couple different sizes of business because you've really got the, the under 50 employees and the right. over 50 employees that have some different regulations. So we've kind of put workshops on that suit both of those different audiences. And something that we're going to continue to do in the future as the laws change and evolve and, mm -hmm. and move on. So, but, uh, you know, another thing that uh, I mentioned the health care and, you know, is, is the Small Business Development Center doing some things to kind of promote those services across the whole state. You know, we have a lot of different subject matter experts within the centers. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult for us here at Piketon, let's say, to go to uh, Toledo and provide some, you know, one, one of our specialties is agriculture that we have here. We have a lot of folks connected to that industry. Uh, the, the Toledo area, they don't, their small business development center really doesn't have any of those industry experts there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know We've struggled with how to serve that need across the state. Uh, what's some of the things the state's doing right now to kind of bring everybody closer together and kind of reduce that extent that we've got to reach out? So, um, Actually, that's a good question because we're working on a project that is a virtual small business development center, and we call it eCenter. We're going to be able to allow businesses to come in and search for expertise from across the state. We'll give them the platform to, for counseling, for training, and educational tools that they'll be able to use online and not have to spend all the time traveling. Okay, that'd be great. And, you know, a lot of times we have businesses come to our center and have, you know, some specialty needs, whether it be, you know, how do I put together a, a drug-free workplace program mm -hmm. for my company? Right. Uh, well, I don't know. we really don't have any experts in staff that do that, but maybe there's somebody in the network across the state mm -hmm. and where they could go and grab that information from them. So that's, right. that'd be a great benefit right. to and all it, the businesses. And even connecting 
other state agencies because workers' compensation would be able to help them. They have an actual outline to help someone do something like that, create the drug-free workplace program. Um, and some of the things we see, your expertise in agriculture is needed in Northwest Ohio. We look at central, central Northern Ohio where farming is still a pretty big industry. Right. But then we've got um, your cooperative center and we've referred people to come to you in the past for um, additional assistance in that area. Mm -hmm. We know where the expertise is, it's making the dots, connecting the dots and getting them to the right place. Right. And, and you know, a lot of times people ask me what I do as a business counselor. And, you know, it's it's easy to sum up, like you said, connect the dots. You know, I've said I'm a dot connector. You know, I don't, I don't need to know everything. I just need to know what resources are available and where to go get them. Right. And how to connect that business with the appropriate people that they need to make their project happen. Yeah. And that's that's the beauty of the small business development centers across the state is we're very well connected with all the different agencies in our region and then we build that layer up to the next at the state and we know all those people there and we can help them uh, swim through all the mazes of, of getting where they need to go. Right, right. Because I know uh, from my own personal experience coming into the network about 10 years ago took you know a couple years to to get a feeling of what all's out there in economic development and business correct so. correct and and even in the 14 years that I've been at development to learn what the rest of the network does what everybody's expertise is um, to be able to connect somebody that wants to start a, start a child daycare um, our Springfield office is an expert in that area when we need um, people that want to help uh, nonprofit organizations and we assist them because most of them are employers so they need those HR experts just like everybody else Lorraine Community College does that very well um, just this past year we did a, a very in-depth market research project and Ohio University in Athens led that group with yours mm -hmm. and Rhodes State College. So um, it's knowing all of those people that make a difference. Now with some of the trainings you had mentioned earlier uh, brought to mind that I think most businesses probably need insurance. Can you lower the insurance by having certain trainings, safety and uh, interpersonal communications, you know, sexual harassment trainings, can, will those affect your, your bottom line as far as insurance? Probably not, as, probably not as much as insurance as it is to have all of those in your employee manual. So then you've got yourself covered um, for everything for that would come up. down the road. Right, right. But um, insurance, there's opportunities where you can buy into group packages, um, do a lot more with um, like um, your workers' compensation rates can be reduced when you actually go in a group together to buy that package. And some chambers offer that service mm -hmm. um, and other partner organizations. So um, those kind of unique uh, opportunities we kind of keep an eye on. Well, you know, that's a lot about the small business development centers and stuff like that. And, and, and Susan, with what you do at work, what are some things you like to do for fun? <coughs> what are some things you do outside of, outside of Columbus and outside of the Development Services Agency? Um, well, um, my husband and I have a family farm. Um, we're located in southeastern Fairfield County. Um, we raise soybeans, corn. Um, we used to have a lot of animals, but um, we don't have the animals anymore. We've raised six kids, and when they all left home and the cattle would get out at least once a year, <laughs> it's not fun to go do that when there's only two people. That's right. Instead of getting up this herd <laughs> in the middle of the night, and we could say, okay, you guys, come on out here. The cattle's got out. We all have to help. 
but you know, they uh, sneak under the fence. Yeah, they, they <laughs> jump over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, farm life is is a part of my history. It's a part of me. Um, we grow a big garden and make sure that they have a lot of food that they need. Um, we have nine grandkids, so we have a lot of bonfires and do hay rides and have fun with them. Good. So, so business ownership is still a part of your background, along with the, you know, the assistance work that you do. Yes. And I, I think one of, that's one of the things that makes you know our small business development centers across the state, you know, very strong, because you know a lot of the consultants that we have own their own businesses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've been there and kind of done that, and we understand the value of, of, of what business owners are trying to do, uh, the importance of the situation that they're in. Mm -hmm. we, we understand. We can put, their, put ourselves in their shoes. Right. And we know it's, it's serious to them what they're working on, their projects, uh, and sometimes it's their, their livelihood that's at stake. Right. And, you know, Brad, our network is so passionate about helping small business owners. Um, they feel very rewarded when their clients are successful. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of the surveys that go out reflect that right, from the feedback right. that we get. Right. Through our program, we try to survey the clients on their satisfaction. Mm -hmm. We also survey them about their economic impact that they've been able to garner because of the services that we offer. And we're able to perform and, and leverage those results and right. keep our grantors happy. <laughs> and, and find ways to add money and grow the program. Right. And, and we're always looking for ways to bring new programs to the table for those businesses. Right. And be creative and, to address current market needs. Right. And we really need to be looking for those opportunities because we want to be valuable to the business owners. We want them to have a reason to come to us for right. assistance. Exactly. Yeah, and it made me think that uh, I don't know what the numbers are, but the majority of jobs, you know, people think that, you know, a lot of them, you know, jobs come from big companies. There are more jobs in small businesses, right? Yeah, they bring a bigger portion of the job for the workforce than the larger businesses do. You know what the percentage is? No. 87%. 87% of the jobs are in small businesses as opposed to like big ones like GM or whatever. Right. You would work for a big company. Right. right. And when you look across the United States, it's closer to 90% of the businesses are small businesses. And SBA defines those as um, businesses with 500 or fewer employees. Right. So if someone was looking for help, where, you know, if they don't know where in their area of Ohio or their state, maybe, where would you look first? Would you ask at the Chamber of Commerce or? They could actually go online to www.ohiosbdc.gov and that'll take them to our website and they can search for a location near them. They can also request electronically to have a counselor call them. And that's nationwide? That's actually Ohio. That's Ohio, okay. Right. Sure. But then there are ways for them to connect to other states have similar, same similar programs. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess Google that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. If they Google SBDC, all kinds of things will pop up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Well, thanks for watching uh, this version, I suppose, yeah. of Strictly Business. And we'll see you back in the studio probably next month. That's right. All right. All right. Thank you. See you then. <laughs>